Oh, hey there. While you might not know it to look at me, I am interested in my personal health and fitness. I like to research and try out different diets and exercise regimen. So today I th thought I would talk about a new recent diet that I tried called Feroz Fitness. One of the recipes that I tried was something called beet hummus, which I've included here as a video for you today. So you can see me making beet hummus and then also comparing it to my favorite recipe for hummus. I'm Chase W. Beck. I have a PhD in anthropology. Join me as we learn about the different ways food and culture intersect on Dr. Beck's Epicurean Lights. In order to make the Ferros Fitness beet hummus, you need some beets. And it actually asks you to get canned beets, a cup of canned beets. You also need some garbanzo beans or chickpeas, a few cloves of totally real garlic, a little bit of ground cumin, a lemon, and some olive oil. What it does not ask for is tahini, which is a standard ingredient in hummus. And that's something that we'll be using in our Zahav hummus that we're going to be making to compare the two hummuses together. I'm going to begin assembling the Ferros Fitness Beet Hummus, which means I get a perfect opportunity for this week's Botany Minute. Beets, or Beta vulgaris, are a member of the plant family Amaranthaceae. They are in fact one of the first members of the plant order Caryophyllales to have their genome sequenced. This was done mainly for determining its relatedness to other domesticated plants, rather than for any interest in genetic manipulation. The reddish purple color of the liquid is due to betalanes, pigments contained within the cells of the beetroot itself. These betalanes have been shown to exhibit antioxidant properties with one type, beta cyanins, having greater antioxidant potential than the other, beta xanthins. As you can see here, I am peeling every single one of these chickpeas. That is because the Ferros Fitness recipe requests that I do so. This is generally advised if you are hoping to make a smoother hummus. And so, in order to satisfy you, my audience, I am following the instructions to the word. This is going to take a long time, so I thought I would show a clip of me trying another one of the Ferros Fitness recipes up in the top corner. This is basically a yogurt-based breakfast. It has uh, Greek yogurt and then some frozen raspberries, a little bit of protein powder, and some maple syrup. As you can see, I've managed to peel every single one of those garbanzo beans, and now I am blending it in the food processor. I'm just adding here the olive oil, which the instructions dictate that I add afterwards, along with the lemon juice. And that is everything that goes in to the Ferros Fitness beet hummus. And there you go. Something that looks like chunky Klingon blood. It tastes a lot better than it looks. The next step is to cut up some bell peppers. You get half a bell pepper for each serving of the Ferros Fitness beet hummus. You get about six servings of beet hummus from one recipe. So now that the Ferros Fitness beet hummus is out of the way, I can begin working on the Zahav hummus recipe. I have here some chickpeas that I soaked from dried overnight in water with a little bit of baking soda. And I'm going to add a little bit more water and cook them on the stove top until they are nice and soft. So now I have the chickpeas or the garbanzo beans on the stove. As you begin to cook them, you, I got a little bit of, of foam on top, which I just skimmed off. Once I got it all skimmed off, I could continue to cook it until it was nice and soft. It took a couple of hours. Ferros Fitness is a creation of CrossFit Games champion Camille LeBlanc-Bazinet. 
The goal of this company is to provide fitness and nutrition coaching with sustainability and optimal health in mind. Now, CrossFit is a fitness movement that began in 2000. Camille leblanc Bazinet says that her program is designed for everyone, regardless of ability, experience, and time. One of the things they offer is a 30-day meal plan, which is what I tried. I've personally examined, made, and sampled about eight of the recipes in the plan, and although I'm not a nutritionist, I do have a few observations as a home cook who is trying to lose weight and live a healthy lifestyle. So as you can see, I pulled out three cups of the garbanzo beans so that I can make the zahav hummus. I'm going to be starting with the non-garbanzo beans ingredients, getting those all ground up in the blender before I add the garbanzo beans afterwards. I understand that the Ferros Fitness beet hummus is a diet recipe and this is not, so it's not a real fair comparison. So let's talk about the pros of this 30-day meal plan. I found that its ingredients were readily available year-round and at most U.S. supermarkets. It contains lots of fruit and generally well-balanced meals and snacks. One of the positives of it as well is that it focuses on macros. So you make sure you're getting all of your macronutrients, your fats, your carbs, and your proteins in the proper balance. I should say real quick that tahini has a tendency to separate as it sits, so it needs to be mixed up before you pour it in, otherwise you might get more oil than the actual sesame paste. So give it a good stir before you use it. I've done that here, but I cut out a little bit of it for time's sake. I should say a little bit about hummus while I can. Uh, why did I choose hummus? Well, uh, I thought the beet hummus recipe was rather intriguing and hummus is one of my favorite dishes to share with people as well as eat myself. Um, I first learned to make hummus from my friend Josh back in 2003 or 2004 and uh, it was the first time I'd ever had anything like it and it really stuck with me and his hummus had a large amount of lemon juice which gave it a very acidic bright flavor. Uh, this hummus here is actually closer to the type of hummus that I enjoyed uh, back in Toledo where my parents lived. and. Uh, that area has a lot of Lebanese influence, and I thought that this was uh, the closest thing I'd ever had to some of the hummuses that they serve in a lot of the Mediterranean restaurants around there.
Let's talk about the cons of the 30-day meal plan from Feroz Fitness. A lot of the images of the recipes that uh, came with them didn't always match the final product. For example, I made banana zucchini bread and the image made it look like it was in a loaf pan, but the actual instructions said to make it in a eight by nine, like flatter pan. It didn't mean it didn't taste great. It tasted pretty good for what it was. Uh, some of the recipes do have errors in them. For example, the one pot ground meat looks like it is served in a skillet. However, the instructions say to start in a pot uh, of an indeterminate size, it doesn't specify the size of the pot. And so while I was making it, I had trouble because I had to switch between vessels in which I was making it. Now, I probably should have realized that being a one pot ground meat dish, that I would be making it all in one pot. And so I should have just chosen a larger pot to begin with. And so you could hold that on me. What you cannot put on my shoulders though, is the problem I have with the butternut squash soup recipe, which tells you to add garlic at one point in the directions, but doesn't mention garlic anywhere in the ingredients list, how much to be used or how much is to be prepared. So does that make it impossible to make butternut squash soup? Of course not. You could still make butternut squash soup. You could probably estimate the amount of garlic that's supposed to be in there or just leave it out entirely. Um, and so I would say that while these recipes can be a little bit frustrating to cook in the kitchen, it doesn't make them uh, bad recipes or impossible recipes. So with our hummus all completed, it's time to put it out into a bowl and prepare it to be served. I like to put a nice little swirl on top so you'll see me taking my spatula and giving it a little bit of a pattern. This helps um, when you go and add the, the toppings. Uh, it helps create little crevices for the uh, lemon juice and the olive oil that we're going to place on top. There we go. Hummus is traditionally served with a few garnishes, some embellishments. The first thing you can add is a little bit of lemon juice. Another great compliment is a little bit of ground cumin. Also add some ground cayenne pepper. And a little bit of ground sumac. Toasted sesame seeds are also a traditional option with which to top hummus. Finally, a nice little squirt of extra virgin olive oil. So now I have both hummuses here for us to try. Uh, here is the Ferrose Fitness uh, Beet Hummus and the Zahav Hummus, uh, the more authentic hummus. Uh, as you can see, uh, I was able to get it pretty smooth even without removing the skins. So I don't think it's absolutely necessary if you have the right tools. Let's try the Ferrose. Now the difference mainly is the amount of, of tahini. This has a whole cup of tahini, but it makes a lot. It makes more than the Ferrose Fitness. And um, this has beets. Uh, and the main thing here with the Ferrose Fitness is its portion control, All right? You're gonna get uh, about one sixth of the entire amount to eat as one snack. Uh, if you were to portion this out into about the same amount, it wouldn't be nearly as bad as, of course, eating this whole bowl. Anyway, let's compare the flavor. The Ferrose Fitness also tells you to eat it with uh, red bell peppers. So that's also going to limit your calories uh, as opposed to eating it with pita chips or anything like that. So maybe I'll try both of the red bell peppers. You know. That's good. It's definitely good. The beet is very present. If you don't really like the flavor of beets, it might be a problem for you, but uh, it's not impossible for me to get over. I'll just flip this around and try the Zahal hummus. Oh, 
Of course, I prefer the Zahab hummus. Uh, but then again, who wouldn't? I have no complaints about the Ferro Safe Fitness, except that the recipe requires you to move, remove the skins, which I think if you look here, is entirely unnecessary. So, I suppose maybe this is what you're going to make and eat for a party. And maybe if you're trying to shed those extra pounds or get fit and lean and strong, you'll go with the Ferro Say red beet hummus for your everyday snack. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time on Dr. Beck's Epicurean Delights.